Hey guys, Mac here of Bound for Nowhere. In this video, I wanna take you guys through one of our largest hurdles in preparing for life on the road, which was actually picking the wardrobes that we are gonna be bringing with us. I know that kind of seems trivial, but it's actually really important to make sure that we had everything that we needed for any weather condition or occasion that we came across out here. I wanna take you through the process of determining our space available, what to bring, and how to keep it organized. In the end, our wardrobe actually takes up roughly one cubic foot. I say roughly because there's some outliers to that, but we will come back to those later. All right, let's get started. The first step in preparing our wardrobe for the road was actually determining how much space we had at our disposal. So we ended up figuring out what we were gonna be using as our closet and our first rig all the way back when we got started on the road in 2016. Once we discovered the space that we were gonna be using, we took measurements of it and we found that when divided in half, one space for me, one space for Owen, we had roughly one cubic foot a person of space to treat as our closet. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was super nervous when I realized that we only had about one cubic foot of space a person for clothes. But it is possible, it can be done, we've been doing it for three years now. It just takes a lot of practice and trial and error figuring out what works for you. So just stick with it and I'll explain the rest of the process. I realized early on that the key to maximizing our extremely small space was keeping it super organized. I did a lot of research trying to figure out what organizational tools there were out there and what we ended up settling on are these Eagle Creek packing cubes. They're awesome because they're lightweight, they're small, and they're durable. We've been using these same ones all three years that we've been on the road and every single one of them has held up to the test of everyday use. After identifying these bags as our storage tool, we realized that when we stacked five of them tall, they would fit perfectly into our space. And once we knew that, it was really easy to then start to work backwards with the space that we knew we had available to us. Figuring out exactly what to bring with our small space was probably the hardest part of this whole process. I will say it's really important to know a couple of things to then help you make your decisions. For us, it was knowing the climate that we're gonna be spending most of our time in. We're warm weather people. We only spend really small amounts of time in cold weather places. So for us, we ended up dedicating way more space to warm weather clothes as opposed to cold weather clothes. It took me a really long time to figure this one out pack basic items. And when I say basic, I mean things that go really well with a lot of other things. So no bright colors or patterns. The reason being is you don't have a whole lot of space at your disposal. So you wanna be able to create as many outfits or looks with fewer pieces. So you want everything to play well together. So just make sure in the end, you're giving yourselves lots of options with less. For me, I personally feel happier when I feel like I have more options. And because all of my clothing seems to play well together, I always feel like I have a lot of options at my disposal. Wardrobes are pretty much as personal as they get. Now that I've kind of talked through my thought process on a lot of this stuff, I kind of just want to show you exactly what I ended up with, just to kind of give you an idea of how all of that turns into real life stuff. So this is my top bag. Uh, it's just one of these full-size Eagle Creek packing cubes, and I actually have 19 tops in here, and it's the full range of athletic tank tops all the way through to like a nice button-up shirt and the full spectrum in between, but I will say most of it is t-shirts. I'm kind of a t-shirt lady. And this is my shorts bag. Again, another full size packing cube. In this one, I have 12 pairs of shorts and it's actually pretty even split. I have six pairs of athletic shorts. We do a lot of hiking and outdoor activities and the other half are casual shorts. This is my cool weather bag and just stuff for cooler days. In here I have a top and bottom base layer, a hard shell rain and windbreaker kind of a performance long sleeve shirt, a sweater, and my favorite flannel. This is my pants bag. And in here I have 
one pair of climbing pants, two pairs of jeans, two pairs of classic black leggings, and one pair of technical hiking pants. In this half cube also by Eagle Creek is my socks. And I have one pair of lightweight gloves, five pairs of athletic socks, and one pair of cold weather socks. So this is my underwear cube. I went with something a little bit different. This is a Patagonia black hole bag. Um, and they're used to go with their suitcases. The reason why I went with this one is because I like to keep my underwear and bras separated. And then it's also, you can store it like this open, which I actually do, or closed if you're traveling or putting it in a suitcase or if this works for your space. But um, on this side, I have two beanies, two buffs, and 20 pairs of underwear. Underwear small, I guess. And you never know when you're gonna do laundry again, so it's nice to have plenty of extra pairs. If you're gonna have a lot of anything, have a lot of underwear. And then in this one, I have three bandanas, five sports bras, and five bras slash bralettes. Owen remaining completely true to form found this process to be very easy. And I think that if you would look up in the dictionary, minimalist, Owen might be what you find in the dictionary, but I wanted to give you an idea of what he has because he does pack a little bit differently than I do. In bag one, he has 10 shirts, one of which is a dress shirt and one hard shell rain jacket. In bag number two, he has two pairs of board shorts, one rash guard, four pairs of shorts, one windbreaker and two buffs. In bag number three, he has one pair of jeans, one pair of climbing pants, one base layer, one heavyweight thermal and one belt. In bag number four, he has one sweater, one beanie, one light down jacket, and one hard shell. In bag number five, he has nine pairs of underwear. In bag number six, he has seven pairs of socks. I think it's really important that you be happy with everything that you bring on the road. And I think that something that kind of goes with that is carrying a couple of treat yourself items. Personally, I have two of them. I think that they're important because it just makes you feel like you're not living without things that you really care about. The first thing for me is I have a denim jacket that I made for Owens in my wedding. It makes me really happy and I didn't want to leave it behind. So I brought it. The second treat yourself item that I carry is some would maybe call an excessive amount of bathing suits. I personally love them. I can't part with them. And that's all I really want to say on the subject. I asked Owen what his treat yourself items were and he came up with nothing. Again, Owen is a minimalist. You might have noticed that thus far, our cold weather clothes haven't got a whole lot of love in our packing list. But in all of our previous rigs, we actually placed all of our cold weather gear in a different spot. We don't spend a whole lot of time in cold weather, so we don't carry very much of this kind of stuff. But all of our cold weather gear has always lived in a compression sack that went somewhere else in our vehicle. The compression sack is great because it has the ability to stuff all of our cold weather gear, then press out any excess air, thus allowing it to pack smaller than it would otherwise. In cold weather, we tended to rely on layering to keep us warm. So this is what we kept in our compression bag. Heavy thermals, heavy wool socks, heavier jacket, a down mid-layer jacket, and for me, a pair of wool overalls because I get cold really easily. When we're in colder weather, we actually swap our warm clothes for our cold clothes into the compression bag so they can get tucked out of the way and we don't have a bunch of excess clothes laying around. I recommend starting this process early if you plan on eventually living on the road full time. The reason being is it took me a really long time to start thinking really practically about my clothes and what it was that I really, really actually needed. And it's also a great opportunity to maybe pack your clothes and what you think that you need and live out of them for a few weeks to see if you made the right decisions or not. And then it's good because you haven't gotten rid of anything yet and can make adjustments without having to rebuy anything. Keep in mind that this process never ends, including after you've gone on the road. It feels like Owen and I are always adjusting and finding things that work for us and don't work for us. Just stay flexible and be willing to make adjustments as you go. 
So that pretty much sums up our entire wardrobe, how we decided on each item, and how we keep everything organized. And I will say, now that we've been living on the road with a tiny wardrobe for a long time, I find that I really appreciate everything that I have so much more and love the creativity that comes with living with less. It's pretty amazing once you get all of your processes streamlined, how prepared you can actually feel with so little. In the description below, I have linked all of the organizational tools that we use and love in the event that you want to try them for yourselves. As always, I hope that you found this video to be super helpful, and please let us know if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future. So subscribe to the channel for more Life on the Road tips, and we can't wait to see you next time. The first step in preparing our wardrobe for the...